there guys, my name is Ken Shadogs, the Bob Bob Built for Theme Park News and welcome to a very, very special series. This is a brand new series on the channel. Now this series is all about reviewing past seasons and different stories throughout the seasons. So welcome to the first ever reviewing the seasons of Alton Towers. That's not the sort of finished title of the series, but it's what we're going to go with for now. So let's review the seasons of Alton Towers and in today's video we're going to kick off with the 2007 season it was a year of highs and lows we're going to go through all of them month by month story by story so before we get started guys make sure you like comment subscribe click the notification bell so you never miss another youtube video please share the channel with nearly 2,000 subscribers and also nearly a half a million views and don't forget guys a uh, special shout out to Alton Towers Old Mank, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, for the information in this video. I used their website uh, to get the information and the news archives. And for now, let's review the 2007 Alton Towers season. So we kicked off in January on the 5th, on the Friday. And there was some information about the closed season event at Alton Towers. Towers Treats and Trails, the old fashioned style event, which ran from February 10th to the 25th, played host to the famous Carter's Traditional Steam Fair all the way from Berkshire. As previously reported in, pre in 2006, entry to the event will be free, and the attractions in Old McDonald's Farmyard, the Tea Corps, and Oblivion were all open. However, all the rides, including the fair, would be subject to small charge. Hotel guests would get access to Alton Towers attractions for free, but not the Steam Fair's rides. Other things to do included face painting, junior archery, and paintballing. The gardens and ruins were also open for guests to explore. So that was a very interesting period for the part. The fact that the Steam Fair came in 2007 to give the guests a bit of close season fun. On the 17th of January, the house and garden tours were cancelled uh, and they were scheduled to take place over the next few months during that year. The tours, previously held in November and December, gave visitors an insight into the park's incredible history, from the ruins of the house to the breathtaking gardens. They were due to be held every weekend from, uh, from 17th of January uh, up until the 17th of March, when the season kicks off. Now the decision was made to discontinue the tours and remove the mention of them from the park's official website. Now the reason behind the decision was there was a large amount of building work currently going on around the park at the time and that all areas needed to be made accessible to vehicles and heavy plant machinery. So a spokesperson actually said from the park, We're disappointed as we have had a successful start to these tours pre-Christmas, but the health and safety of our guests is paramount and we need to ensure that we are ready for the 2007 season. So of course that's interesting, the house and garden tours scrapped that were planned uh, for the next few months uh, during that year. Now, obviously, we spoke about a heritage tour plan that Alton Towers put in in recent weeks. Um, I mean, that it could be a nod to what was being planned here. Um, and it's good to see that we could get some kind of tour for the heritage next season. Um, but definitely, this was a nod to the past as to some planned tours over, those, over a few month period. Now, on the 18th of January... There was a report on the Two Sword Annual Pass. Can't remember. Do any of you remember Two Sword Annual Pass? Uh, now, the pass which allowed you to get into many Two Sword attractions, including Alton Towers, Thorpe Park, and the London Eye, was usually subject to a price increase each year. Two Sword revealed this year, uh, the, the year's cost for 2007. 95 pounds for an individual pass and 285 quid for a family pass this saw a 10 pound and 30 pound increase respectively compared to the previous season's prices so this one was a very interesting story as well and i think that you know many of us will remember that story um you know comment down below if you had a two sword daniel pass you know i i, I mean i don't I've never had an annual pass, I'll be honest, I've never had an annual pass, whether it's Merlin, whether it's Two Swords, but I, I never, I, but I do remember the story about the annual pass increase when Two Swords was earning it, so, you know, it's a story I remember all too well, even though I didn't have the pass myself, but, you know, I don't, I don't think many people liked the increase in price. 
Now, also in January, we had Most Haunted come to town. And at 9 o'clock on Tuesday the 30th of January on Living TV 2007, Yvette Fielding and the team investigating the ghostly phenomenon at Alton Towers. The hour-long program followed at 10pm by Most Haunted Extra, which was a behind-the-scenes look at the show. So that was where Most Haunted came to the Towers ruins. And who got, who, do any of you remember that one? I certainly remember that one. Uh, <laughs> um... Now, of course, at the end of January, there was some good news for Nemesis because it was ranked third in the Coaster Poll. Now, it's been a firm favourite since 1994 and still a firm favourite to this day as of 2020. Um, But in 2007, its ranking of third is the highest it ever had at the time in the poll, which is respected as the most accurate reflection of how steel and wooden coasters are rated by enthusiasts across the globe. Now, in terms of where other Alton Towers roller coasters ranked, Oblivion was 73rd at the time, Air was 75th, and Rita Queen of Speed was 105th, which is very interesting. Now, the other UK coasters that did well at the time were Dragon's Fury, ranked at 30th from Chessington, Speed at Oakwood at 33rd, and Nemesis Inferno, Stealth and Colossus at 51st, 60th, and 78th, respectively. So, it was a grand day for Nemesis, and I know a lot of... um, other UK coasters that did well in the polls as well and didn't do too well. Some coasters did well, some coasters did do too well. And Nemesis is one of those that exceeded every expectation and got its highest ranking since construction and opening back in 1994. And then finally, in January, to end the January news archive, Alton Towers would launch the Customer Council. Um, your part needs you. Now, this customer council was a brand new way of listening to what the guests are telling the park, as well as providing with an invaluable research tool. It could have also been an excellent opportunity for you to spend some time with the Alton Towers management team, putting across your views and getting a unique insight into future plans. They were looking for enthusiastic, knowledgeable and creative applicants who would also have an understanding of the realities of running a business. Naturally, they would have asked you to maintain complete confidentiality and you'll be asked to complete an agreement to this effect. And if selected, you'll be expected to commit to attending three council meetings at Alton Towers over the course of that year. And in return, you get a fantastic opportunity to help shape the future of the UK's most famous theme park. So this customer council, so basically what you had to do if you wanted to get involved was you'd send an email to a certain, you send a certain email to an email address and you would also put your name on there, your age, your postal address and also why you feel you'd be perfect to sit on the council in a hundred words or less. So it's pretty much like a mini essay I guess. So, um, you know, the customer council being launched was you know, an amazing um, opportunity for guests to, to get an insight into the park and to uh, to get an insight into how the future plans could operate and shape up. And, you know, I think that um, this idea, I think this idea would be good now. I mean, comment down below if you'd like to see a customer council this, uh, for next year or the year after. Um, I think that a customer council would be fantastic for Alton Towers, especially if you're working from home or online in COVID conditions. Uh, obviously, COVID, if, if it's still around by, by 2022. Um, but, you know, I think the customer council would be great for, for nowadays. So it was a great way to get guests involved. And it was a great news story to end the month of January 2007. Moving then into February, and it started off really, really well on the 6th because Alton Towers Almanac did a nice roundup of all the 2007 attractions, and I wanted to have a look at them in pure detail here in this month. So, of course, most of the attention was focused on the Old McDonald's Farmyard. Who remembers the Old Old McDonald's Farmyard? Um, I remember that area all too kindly. Um, as well as the opening of the upcoming event Towers Treats and Trails, which we spoke about in January, it'll see a new attraction installed as well as an update for an existing ride. So in the Old McDonald's Farmyard, this is what went down. The new attraction in question was the Something in the Dung Heap Adventure Playground. So this was being located in a former animal barn that had been empty since the 2001 foot and mouth outbreak. 
So as, as well as everything in the farmyard, this unusually themed playground would, aim, would be aimed at young children and it would co compromise the interactive play areas including a spider springy cobweb climbing zone, a creepy crawly bash around, toxic bog toadstool boing ponds and a mushroom maze. Also, there'd be something called, wait for it, the Soil Abong Hall. Albug Hall. <laughs> Which is a weird name. Um, the Soil Albug Hall. It's basically a play on the Royal Albug Hall, if you didn't get it. <laughs> so it's a bit of a weird play on words, but we'll move on. Uh, here the children would be able to join in the bug chorus, zip along on a zilkin zip wire, spring across a bog, and become a conductor in the Trash Can Symphony. Parents will be able to keep an eye on their little ones from the trunk of a beanstalk. So that's the fantasy description of this attraction. Um, so this was the main focus for the kids' area. This is a brand new playground for the area, Old McDonald's Farmyard. Of course, modern day Alton Towers fans will now know that area as CBeebies Land. You guys will know that. If, you did, if you're sitting there now with no recollection of the history of the park, you're thinking, hang on. CBBs used to be themed to a farmyard. Yes, it was, and I remember both areas all too well. Uh, Old McDonald's Farmyard and Storybook Land next to it. Um, now, as well as this brand new Dung Heap Playground, there was the Riverbank Ice Spy getting a bit of an upgrade. So it got its first big upgrade or update since it was rethemed from the canal boat ride back in 1999. For those who didn't ride it, the Ice Spy slowly travels on a circuit past several different cutout animals with guests able to press buttons in the boat that play uh, corresponding animal noises. Now the changes made, the big change that was made, was of course the 2D cutout animals being replaced and redone in 3D versions. In a similar style to the model seen around the driving school attraction in uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land, of course that's now... Um, you know, mainly the world of David Williams, but of course back then it was known as Cred Street uh, at the time. Now as well as this, there was another new attraction in the park, it was the Haunted Hollow. Now this actually uh, was located in the old miniature railway sort of route, uh, which last operated in the early 90s. And this hadn't been touched for so many years, and now it's been rerouted as a walkthrough with some theming around it called the Haunted Hollow. It was a nice little uh, path. Now, fitting in with the Gloomy Woods theme, the path would feature gothic tombstones that came to life, open vaults echoing the sounds of cack cackling corpses, ghostly figures appearing from nowhere, headless statues and creaking carriages, and this connects to Gloomy Wood and Forbidden Valley. It's a nice idea and one that would expand the Gloomy Wood theme, which was since brought in in 1992, as only stay within the limited confines of the area around Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Back, or of course known back then as the Haunted House. So this was a very nice attraction. Now as well as that, there was another new attraction but outside the park. This was a brand new paper play golf game known as, of course, Adventure Go Extraordinary Golf. It's, it's, it's adventurous, but it's Extraordinary Golf. That's the name of it, Extraordinary Golf, for those of you who didn't know. Uh, now, this was situated next to the Splash Landings Hotel, scheduled to open in April, and the new 18-hole course would feature many, many versions of the park's signature rides, including Nemesis, Oblivion, and the Driving School. So there was a big attraction there. I've actually tried it once back in the day. I loved it. It was brilliant. Um, I love that game. I love it. Extraordinary golf. You couldn't beat it. And uh, it was a nice extra attraction along with the rest of the park. Uh, now, as well as the stuff with the Riverbank Ice Spy, the Dung Heap, Haunted Hollow, Extraordinary Golf, we also had some changes and some new events inside the park. Now, of course, events-wise, we had Towers, Treats and Trails. Now, of course, that was the Carter Steam Fair thing we talked about in the January month. There was also the first of several Adrenaline Weeks. Do you remember the Adrenaline Weeks? Uh, now, that, now, the first one runs from Monday the 19th to Friday the 23rd of March. So that was, uh, that was a long, long time ago. Um, so was, this one was right at the start of the season. And the week that was the week following the opening day. Uh, now, unlike previous events of this nature, it was expected to take place during the open season and all the rides expected to be open except the Dung Heap, because of course that was still under construction, and of course the Runaway Mine Train, because of course it was the year before of that horrific accident on the mine train. So uh, that's the reason why that was closed, and obviously we'll come to all of that this year, because the mine train of course reopened that uh, this year. 
uh, in 2007. The park also promised that guests will get onto Nemesis, Oblivion, Air and Rita at least three times in one day and if not, they will get their money back subject to terms and conditions and breakdowns are not included etc. So this was a weird weird week and Adrenaline Weeks, I loved the sound of them. I mean, everyone loved the sound of them. Who would like to see the Adrenaline Weeks come back? Comment down below. And um, yeah, this was a very interesting one. This was a nice area. This was a nice event. And see all the stuff going on in different areas of the park, like Forbidden Valley, X Sector, Almodor's Farmyard, excluding the Dung Heap, Katanga Canyon, excluding the Mine Train. And to see all this stuff going on, it was nice. So, I love the look of the Adrenaline Week events. They were brilliant. Uh, now, also, we had Chocolate Towers. Who remembers Chocolate Towers? Uh, this was the Easter event, which ran in the, for its second year at the time. It was its second year of operation. Uh, between the 31st of March and the 15th of April. A perfect Easter timeline. Now, not many details were released in this month. Uh, but it was safe to say there'll be plenty of activities and games at both the park and the hotels, as was the case the previous year. Some of the highlights included an acrobatic Easter bunnies, um, a chocolate bungee run, and chocolate-specific menus for those with a sweet tooth. Now, there, now, at the time of this article, there was still no firm decision about the fireworks, which at the stage was very likely to have been cancelled, which was weird, but the park once again promised the return of the Halloween event. Whether or not it actually happened is another matter. So at the time, we didn't even know if there was going to be a Halloween or a fireworks or both. Uh, we knew there was a good chance to be a fire uh, to a Halloween, but we didn't know about a fireworks event, maybe. So uh, this was definitely a month to think about, but... I swear, I swear, this was just a complete roundup of 2007 attractions and events. You know, Chocolate Towers, the Adrenaline's Week, Towers, Treats and Trails, um, a possible Halloween event return, you know, the possibility of a fireworks if it was, you know, potentially, uh, of what we knew at the time. Uh, and of course, the new attractions, Haunted Hollow, Extraordinary Golf, there's something in the Dung Heap Playground, the changes to Riverbank I Spy, you know, this was a, a massive year for overall changes and some new attractions in different places of the park. A nice new themed walk route, a new paper play golf course outside the main park next to the Splash Landings Hotel, and a brand new playground, which, to be perfectly honest, not many people were fans of at the t uh, uh, you know, further down the years especially, not many people were fans of it. So, you know, it was completely understandable, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, as a kid, as a seven-year-old kid, six, seven-year-old kid at the time, I loved the playground because it was brilliant. Um, it was fantastic to see all the the, the, the cobweb climbing zone um, and the boingiums and whatever they are, the boing -upons. <laughs> And to, you know, to see the, the Albug Hall, you know, um, that, was, that was weird. That was a weird name. <laughs> I look back on it now in adult years and thinking, why did they call it that? Um, so, you know, but it was nice at the time. But I think looking back on it, I was like, maybe they need something a bit better. Uh, but, you know, for that year, it was an okay investment. It was a nice overall package of investments. And it was good to see the Ice Spy getting some 3D animals. So, you know, overall, it wasn't too bad in terms of changes. Um, going into the 10th of February on the Saturday then. Now, the Alton Towers on that day opened its doors... Uh, as the half term event kicked off, which of course the Towers Treats and Trails. So of course that was the two week event, playing host to the Carter Steam Fair, which travelled up from Berkshire. The event was mainly aimed at young children with plenty of activities for kids, although Oblivion was open to keep the older ones entertained. So of course Oblivion was open as well. Uh, the good news for those who want to appreciate the majestic ground surrounding the house is that entry was free! It was brilliant! Uh, the attractions, though, were all pay per ride, and this also applied to annual pass holders. So, uh, very interesting there. I mean, again, do you want to see a Towers Treats and Trails kind of event? Comment down below. Do you want to see it in the future? Maybe, maybe not. Um, now, a few days later, on the 14th of February, it was announced on a, on a news article on the same website, Alton Towers Almanac, uh, about a customer council deadline. Of course, the deadline was Friday, so it was only a couple of days after this article came out, for the customer council to get your views across to shape the future of Alton Towers. Um, you know, and, there were, and the article was getting people to, to bring in you know, their thoughts and to, you know, to apply for this customer council. So that was a big day for the, you know, approaching the deadline. 
And then the day before the deadline, on the 15th of February, they announced Alton Towers Fear Fest. Ah, see what we did there? Um, so at the end of last year, there was reports that things stood. The traditional fireworks event to round out the open season had been dropped and replaced with a Halloween event instead. Now, the website Haunted Attractions UK uncovered some more details about the event. They report that it will last three weeks, starting on October 13th, so 2007. The excellent Haunted Maze Tower of the Towers will return, w would return to the park. A huge success when it last ran in 2003, taking guests through the Gothic ruins. Now, there would also be another Haunted Maze, according to the report, though no details at the time was revealed. Perhaps, and this is what Alton Towers Almanac said, it could be similar to the Midnight in the Garden of Evil attraction advertised last year before it was cancelled, before the event was cancelled. So maybe, so there was a there was like a, a rumour at the time that maybe they would go back on that promise and reinvent it for this Fear Fest. And I call it Fear Fest because it was called at the time Fear Fest. Um, there was also advertised uh, Halloween attractions for younger children, including the possibility of one or two mazes, which was a bit of a rumour at the time. The new 2007 attraction, Haunted Hollow, was all set to become extra scary for the event. The family friendliness was gone, and in with it will be live acts and extra effects. So this was a very nice surprise. It was like a like a Haunted Hollow live kind of thing. Um, Tower Street was expected to be heavily decorated for the event, with some of the major rides possibly also being slightly rethemed. And there was also the possibility of each night finishing with a lakeside finale, which could include water, fire, and laser effects. Over at the hotel, the Haunted Walkthrough Room 13 was first introduced the previous year and deemed another success is returning for that year, 2007. So Room 13 returned for that year. Uh, this time, rather than borrowing sets and props from Terror of the Towers, the maze would totally have a new design. So this was very interesting. And also, the Haunted Cornfield, another haunted maze. Now, according to a report, work on planting the two-acre cornfield had already begun at the time of the article being published. Well, this news information being published. Any hotel attractions are planned to be free for guests staying at the hotels in the resort, while non-residents will be able to experience them for a fee. Now, as always, the park's plans change from day to day. Now, the amount of times Halloween have been set to return, but there hasn't been proof of that. But it's just some of the proposed attractions happen that it would be an exciting finish to the season. So the source of that information was on Alton Towers Almac. But, of course, the whole information was from the report by Haunted Attractions UK at the time. So the whole stuff about the Haunted Cornfield, Room 13, uh, Terror of the Towers, you know, another new maze. We, we didn't know more details about at the time. Again, this was a very interesting probability. And, you know, this was... This was interesting, you know. This was this was really interesting. And, you know, I, I was really surprised to see what could happen with that. So, um, you know, looking back now, I was like, this Fear Fest could be brilliant. So it was great to see all of that. And it was a great uh, way to, to, to get people excited about Halloween. And then finally, for the month of February on the 27th, uh, Alton Towers published their 2007 price list on the official website in preparation for the new season. So an adult one-day ticket rose in price by £2.50, with the child's ticket now costing £3 more than it did in 2006. So, um, as well as that, the internet price for an adult ticket would increase by a quid, but the child price had stayed the same. Senior and disabled guests would now have to fork out an extra £1.25 per ticket, but the biggest price increase had to be on the family ticket for two adults and two children. Last year's price was 72 quid in 2006, and this year in 2007, at the time, it was 89 quid, a whopping £17 increase in the space of a year, which was mad. Uh, now, those wanting to buy tickets for groups of 10 adults or more would now pay 90p more per person this year. However, the price of a group child booking had stayed the same. So this was a very interesting story from Alton Towers. I know a lot of people would not be fans of the price increase but at the same time you know a lot of people wouldn't have minded too much but to be fair you know i think a lot of people would have probably complained with that so you know it wasn't the best event in terms of stories to um to february but you know fair enough you know at, at least they announced it straight at least they announced it straight and didn't you know bs anyone about prices and things like that so they were clear on it they, it was clear what they wanted to do and things like that so it was a big end to february in terms of the ticket prices <music> 
Moving into March, and this is a very interesting story. Now, this was the day, the 5th of March, 2007, the day Two Swords was acquired by Merlin for £1 billion. Merlin Entertainment, owner of the Legoland and Sea Life attractions, acquired the Two Swords group from Dubai International Capital, DIC, for £1 billion. This made Merlin, the, which is owned by the US private equity group Blackstone, the second largest attractions operator in the world after Disney. DIC would retain a 20% stake in the combined company. So, this was a very interesting story because, um, you know, this this was a massive turning point for Alton Towers, for Thorpe Park, for, for Chessington, for, for the Sea Life, for the London Eye, for Legoland. This was a big turnaround. You know, Legoland and Sea Life were owned by that company, but for Alton Towers, Thorpe Park, Chessington, the London Eye, you know, all those kind of things, it was a big turning around. It was a big, big turning point. And it was a turning point in the history of their parks. So, you know, the investment would change dramatically. And it would, it would still go on, but the investment style would change. So, you know, Alton Towers were now going to be owned by a new person acquiring two swords. So, you know, this was a massive moment in the UK theme park industry. Now, back on the 9th of March 2007, the park opened its doors for the 2007 season. Followed shortly after by the first adrenaline week of the year, running from the 19th to the 23rd of March. Now, Alton Towers announced they were giving away a lifetime pass to the park, which could not be presently bought for any price to the person who could ride Nemesis, Oblivion, Air and Rita the most during the event. No words yet on whether free sick bags will be available, though, as the article says. The park already said they'll be running a triple ride promise over the course of the event. That is, every guest will be able to ride those four roller coasters at least three times in the day, and if not, they'll give you a ticket to come back another day for free. It was also a great time to visit the park, as most of the attractions should be open, barring the Royal Mine Train and the new attractions for 2007 Haunted Hollow and the Dung Heap. So, you know, apart from all of them, it was... Pretty much all systems go, and this whole lifetime pass thing was a very interesting move by the park. And I, 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 to be fair, I was quite a massive fan of the lifetime pass. I think that was like a, a good, fun move by the park. So fair play to them for that. Uh, and then on the 17th of March 2007, the three new attractions, Dung Heap, Hollow, and Golf, were still under construction, and the Runaway Mine Train was still closed following the crash back in July 2006. And it wasn't expected to reopen until April at the earliest. The rest of the park, however, was up and running on the 17th of March for the commencement of the 2007 season. Now, of course, as well as this, um, going to 19th of March, it was the beginning of the first Adrenaline Week. Now, of course, this was the week when guests were promised to be able to ride Nemesis, Oblivion, Air and Rita at least three times a day each, technical faults accepting, or they'll get a vouch to come back to the park for free. So this was a, a very interesting thing indeed. Um, now, of course, to sort of run through that first day, um, now Nemesis was quite temperamental over the last few days, breaking down quite frequently. So this was, you know, a sign that maybe Nemesis could let a few people down, but it seemed like Adrenaline Week number one was still going to be an instant success no matter what. So, you know, the Adrenaline Week was something I'd like to see in the future, and comment down below if you want to see that in the future as well. Now, this was very interesting story back on the 20th of March. The, Rop the Ropers taking Alton Towers to the High Court. Uh, Stephen and Suzanne Roper taking the long-running legal battle with Alton Towers to the High Court. And it relates to the amount of noise created by the theme park and its impact on the lives of the Ropers and other local residents. Now, of course, previously the couple had taken Alton Towers to court through the parent company Two Swords and won, securing a noise abatement order of the part which restricts them in terms of noise levels. The part was allowed, uh, also given a fine of £5,000, which is the maximum amount allowed for this type of order. They appealed against the ruling, but ultimately the noise was unsuccessful. However, it did mean that terms of the noise abatement order was renegotiated, which resulted in the fine dropping to £3,500, and some of the restrictions were made less. Now, of course, you know this was a, a big court case in the theme park industry. This was a big noise complaint, and um, it was only back on the 23rd of March 2007 that the High Court bid had failed. Uh, so despite having won the original trial, they were fended off by an appeal by Alton Towers. They were still unhappy with the terms of the noise abatement order that they managed to have applied to the park. They attempted to get the High Court to overrule the original terms and impose tight restrictions on the park. They claimed the ten terms were irrational and the court had taken leave of the census. 
Now the legal action which had been ongoing for over four years had cost Two Swords just under £500,000 according to Jonathan Kaplan QC, their representative. The legal costs from the Ropers were believed to be upward of £10,000. The decision by the High Court means that Two Swords will now have to consider whether to go ahead with plans to appeal against the noise abatement order itself, also in the High Court, because despite today's positive ruling, the order is still in place and restricts the park heavily. So this, the, the information from this on the webs on this sort of news site came from BBC News originally, and this was a big story. And the failing of it was a big for Alton Towers, as it was for the Roper family. So you know, this was a very interesting story and one that I kept an eye on, especially in future years looking back on it. Uh, now, finally in March, the new Alton Towers website was launched. Obviously, it's not that new now, is it? Um, and I'm seeing pictures of of the old website. Um, I mean, to, I mean, come on! It, it, this was like the old days of the internet, and I'm looking at the difference. And you can start if you if you've seen pictures of the new website, um, you can sort of see the website for yourself how it starts to evolve into the current website we know and love today you can see how it sort of evolves and um you know this was very interesting now of course vccp digital with the company responsible for producing the site preceding this one now the part chosen to go with together agency who already worked with towers on creating their resort guides and mail shots so they were a brand new company designing the website which was very very interesting indeed and um you know this was this was very interesting and you know, it was definitely a nice sort of uh, end to, to March to get the brand new website up and running. So, interesting end to March, and this is going to be very interesting indeed. Moving into April, and it started off very positively with the reopening of the Runaway Mine Train, which crashed in mid-July 2006, had been closed since, while the Health and Safety Executive conducted an investigation into the accident, and the train had also been completely refurbished by manufacturer Matt Wright. Now, it was deemed a one-off by the h &S investigation, and nobody was seriously hurt in the accident, and the fans of the ride would be happy to hear that it reopened shortly after 10 o'clock in the morning. So the length of the train appeared to have been significantly shortened. So this was a big, big story for April because the reopening of the runway mine train was pivotal uh, for the families, and it was nice to see them, you know, open, shall we say? Uh, now, um, on Tuesday, the 17th of April, there was a report. Of course, on the Monday was, of course, St George's Day, and the park celebrated it in typically wacky style by letting anybody with a dragon in free of charge. Unlike previous offers of the nature, the ranging from gnomes and superheroes, you need not have another person paying full entry price. Simply take along a dragon, either plastic, metal, soft, komodo or other, and you get in free. Simple. Um, now, the terms and conditions on the official website lists one dragon required per free entry, no battle axe allowed, and any abandoned dragons will be slain. Uh, now, this was a fun way, a fun offer by Alton Towers. Now, Brendan Walker's Thrill Laboratory specialised in looking into science behind thrills, and they conducted experiments on fairground rides. Now, his team of thrill technicians were considering coming to Alton Towers to find out just what happens when guests subject themselves to oblivion's vertical drop at the speed of 60 miles per hour. This was reported on the 24th of April, and this was about the Thrill Laboratory at Alton Towers. So, this was a very interesting way to end 2007 April and it was a very interesting way to um, signal the Thrill Laboratory had come to town. That was a quick month, this is another one, into May and the UK theme parks were uh, known as a rip-off uh, and they were overpriced and queuing times were too long according to a new report. Uh, now, this signalled out parks like Alton Towers, Legoland, Thought Park, Drayton Manor, Chessington and Flamingoland. They criticised not only the pricing of the parks, but also the length of the queues and the limited amount of healthy food available by the Soil Association report. So, that was not a very good start to, uh, to the month. However, in 21st of May, they brought in the second Adrenaline Week details. 
Running from the 4th to the 8th of June, the event would not see any changes in terms of the park's appearance or ride lineup. However, there was an offer during the week. If you take your on-ride photo from any roller coaster in the park to guest services, they would exchange it for one park ticket for you to use during September. You won't be able to keep your ride photo, but effectively you'd be getting another park ticket for £4.99. Additionally, the park were running an offer to get your Adrenaline Week tickets for 20 quid for adults or 16 quid for children. The event now puts the total amount of Adrenaline Weeks in 2007 up to three, with one held in March and another expected to round out the season in early November. So this was, again, a very interesting move. Another Adrenaline Week, which I was a big fan of. And then, the changing of the name of the Halloween event to round off May into Scarefest. It was originally going to be named Fearfest, but it's now Scarefest. Now, of course, there was Tower of the Towers, Room 13, and the Haunted Cornfield. And addition to, in addition to the posters that was revealed, the part were also busy creating promotional photos and videos for the Scarefest with actors dressed as zombies and ghouls posting in the ruins. Uh, now, over in the hotels, the Haunted Cornfield at the time was also starting to grow, and as a teaser at the park, I put a Halloween scarecrow on it. So, some good teasers for Halloween to end the month of May. Now, this was something good to start off June. Behind the scenes tours were announced for the 7th of July, 11th of August. 25th of August, 8th of September, 15th of September and 70th of October. The price for this year's toll will be £70 per person. Annual pass holders would get a 15% discount and only pay £59.50 per person. Like the previous year, the day would consist of two behind the scenes sessions, one in the morning and one in the evening, with guests able to enjoy the park's rides in between. The day would start at 8 a.m. and finish around 8 p.m. Lunch provided and guests would be given priority passes for a select number of attractions as well as priority parking tickets. Guests could be expected to experience behind the scenes on su rides such as Oblivion, Hex, Rita, Air, Nemesis and Jewel. And each tour would have a slightly different um, sort of expectation and sort of you know situation depending on the operational implications. Now guests would have the option and the opportunity to talk to Alton Towers technical and ride teams whilst looking in the rides workshops and behind the scenes. Guests would also be able to see the flag tower, an ancient monument within the grounds, and an opportunity to talk to management and technical teams with a selection of archive material would also be given. And they've also issued a list of Q&As for those interested in knowing more. And of course they had all the T's and C's for the event as well, or for the events. So this was a very interesting one, a behind the scenes tour. Now this, I, I like the sounds of. I love the sound of these behind the scenes tours. And I think that, you know, it was amazing to sort of experience that um, for people. So, I mean, I didn't get this chance to experience it, but I know a lot of people would have had the chance to experience these tours. And I know that it would have been a great experience for them. Finally, to end off June and to end off part one of my review into 2007, Oblivion's Thrill Experiment was to go ahead. And of course, this came on from the ATA poll on the event. Alton Towers decided to go ahead with the roller coaster Thrill Experiment later this year, uh, later in the 2007 year. Now, of course, the Thrill Laboratory is an entertaining event where guests are invited to re reveal and revel in both the carnival and the science of thrill. Now, it takes place in September and it gives an insight into Alton Towers where riders of Oblivion can expect to be given an unusual personal insight into their own psyche and perhaps that of the laboratory staff too. So this was a very interesting end to June and an end to the first half of the year. And I reckon that they did exceptionally well with the Thrill Lab. So there we go, that is part one of the review into 2007. You could see a lot of stuff was going down. Part two is not too far away, guys. Do not do not worry. We will do some other parts as well, but of course we will get through a year before we move on to the next year. So part two of 2007 will come soon enough. And, you know, it, it was amazing to look back into the previous years, to look back into 2007 and to experience the first half of that year again. Um, and to go through the memories as well, experiencing the Dung Heap, experiencing Haunted Hollow for the first time, Extraordinary Golf, you know, all these different things. And it was nice to revel in that and sort of go back down memory lane and experience all of that. So... 
Um, stay tuned with me guys for part two that will be coming out at a later date very very soon not too sure yet but it will come out soon I'll try and record part two very very soon so please stay tuned for that but for now guys thank you very very much for watching this video make sure you like comment subscribe stay tuned for more theme park videos coming up very very soon as well and for now my name is Coast Chow keep living the coastal life and I'll see you guys in the next video very very soon take care guys have a thrill-tastic day